Welcome to another edition of Fit and Fire. I'm Mark and I really appreciate you guys stopping by. So as always, before I get into this video, I wanted to take a second to let you guys know of a couple different things going on. First and foremost, if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate you guys consider subscribing. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button down below. And since subscribing doesn't really mean anything to YouTube anymore, make sure you hit that bell button so you're getting the notifications of any new videos coming out. If you like what I'm saying, thumbs up is always appreciated as well. Here recently I had a video taken down because of it being flagged. Luckily no strikes against my channel, but it did kind of open my eyes that I shouldn't have all my eggs in one basket. So I have three other platforms that you can find me on. Links to all of those are down in the description below. Those are gunstreamer.com, hugetube.com, and 2avid.com. You can pick which one you like the best. Swing on by, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Finally, if you are new to the channel, fitandfire.com is up and running. That's my website to supplement the information in these videos. Since YouTube's new policies have gone into effect, I'm not able to directly link firearm manufacturers into the videos, so I've put them over there. Fitandfire.com has a whole bunch of great stuff, it has deals of the week, great internet finds, the stuff that I use on a daily basis, some things that I'd like to get my hands on in the near future, and then my AR-15 build list as well. So swing on by, check it out, fitandfire.com. It does support the channel indirectly, and I would appreciate it. So let's get into this video. This time we're talking about the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 Compact and let me tell you this is actually a pretty cool pistol. I've got it right here. It's been loaned to me by a good buddy of mine, Drew. Thank you so much. Patreon member, I sure do appreciate all the support. So I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit of the features on the pistol itself, some of the things I didn't like, and then my experiences with shooting it. There's going to be tons of videos out on the interwebs. It's going to give you all the minute specifics on this pistol. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights and then talk about some of the things that I, like I said, didn't really care about. Now, the MMP 2.0 Compact is the direct competitor to the Glock 19. Smith & Wesson has always had a full size and a subcompact version of the MMP 9, but they never had anything in between to directly compete with Glock 19s. Glock 19s is one of the most popular pistols out on the markets today, so Smith & Wesson decided they needed to do something about it. This particular version is going to be the 4-inch barreled version, and Smith & Wesson has a smaller version called the, I don't know, it's a 3.5-inch version, I think. Um, but I digress. This particular one, like I said, 4-inch barreled version, and... To be frankly honest with you, I was somewhat skeptical on whether or not I was going to enjoy this pistol because I'm really not a Smith & Wesson fan. But with that being said, I've had this for a couple of months, I've ran about 500 rounds through it, and I think that is a good number to kind of get you used to it and kind of work out some of the bugs that you may come into as you switch from one style of pistol to another. So let's get into a few of the features that the MMP 2.0 Compact has with it. So naturally, this is going to have a shorter frame than the full-size version, uh, and it does accept the 15-round magazines. You will get two of these when you buy these brand new, and you know they're they're pretty good. I like them. You know they slide right on out when you hit that uh, magazine release, and it really helps out with magazine changes. One of the other things that I like about the MMP 2.0 Compact is the fact that it is very ambidextrous, right? So the slide catch, slide release, slide stop, whatever you want to call it, is on either side of the pistol. And then the magazine release is able to be switched to either side as you need it. One of the great things about the MMP 2.0 is the serrations they have on the rear and the front of the slide. They have a scaled texture, so that gives you a very, very rigid area to get your hands in on the slide and to rack it. You're never going to miss it each and every single time, I can guarantee you that. Now the front serrations I think are a little bit more aesthetic. I'm pretty sure the customer base said, hey, we want front serrations, so they threw them in underneath the Smith & Wesson and the M&P cuts on the slide, and 
there you go, it's a thing. You end up really grabbing a hold more of the slide than you will of the serrations if you're doing press checks. That's a thing, I guess. Now, this will accept the full-size 17-round magazines, but one of the things that I will caution you about is you want to make sure that you have the extension, the spacer, rather, on the magazines. Because if you don't, you can actually over-insert the magazine and that can cause malfunctions with the pistol. So keep that in mind if you're going to use the larger magazine. And finally, it has your standard white three dot sights. Um, they're fine. Uh, I would probably upgrade these to the Ameriglo I dot sights because I love those. They're very, very intuitive to use. Their front sight posts extremely bright. Uh, but to be honest with you, since I've been using it, I've had no problems with these particular sights. With one exception, I'll get into that in just a second. The other great feature is the pistol grip here is very aggressively textured. I thought that that may be an issue with me um, while I'm shooting it. Normally I wear gloves, but for the most part when I'm doing pistol work, I don't wear gloves. I thought maybe holding sandpaper, which is what it kind of feels like, may be an issue. But to be honest with you, as I was shooting, I didn't even really notice it. One of the great things about that very aggressive texture to it is it keeps it very stable in your hand while you're aiming and firing. There's not gonna be much jump in this pistol as you're shooting. Now with that being said, there is an opposite side to that coin. And if you're gonna carry this concealed, you may wanna wear an undershirt. If not, you might wanna pick up some sandpaper and lightly sand this down, smooth it out just a little bit because it's gonna chew up your skin like you wouldn't believe. But I digress. One of the other great things about the pistol grip is that it's gonna come with four different back straps, a small, medium, medium, large, and large. So you can switch those out real easy and get it to fit your hand perfectly as you need it. So those are kind of the highlights to this pistol. Now let's get into a couple of different things that I didn't particularly care about. First thing I've already talked to you is the texture of the pistol grip. It's good, but like I said, there's an opposite side to that coin. So I've already discussed the sights, but one of the main reasons that I don't particularly care for these particular sights is the fact that these, the rear sight is actually a little bit slanted. Here recently I was able to train at Tactical Response with James Yeager and his crew, and one of the things that they taught us was single-handed manipulation. So what that is, is if you have a stoppage, you need to tap, you can tap and then rack against your belt and that is very difficult with this rear sight. There is a bit of a ledge, but it's so small that it's gonna be difficult for you to really get in on your belt and rack your slide as you need to. So that's another reason why I would upgrade these sights to the Ameriglo IDOT style of sights for this pistol. So. The final thing is the trigger. I've never been a fan of the M&P triggers. This is actually an improvement from the original, but it's still, it's just still okay. I think if anything, if I was to personally own this, the very first thing I would do after the sights, I guess so, the second thing I would do is replace the trigger. So that's what I have to say about the M&P 2.0 compact. Overall, it's still a great pistol. If you're wanting to get something other than a Glock, this is a very good option, and I think it's gonna do a lot of you very well. So, my experience has overall been positive. I've been able to run some drills, um, been able to shoot uh, very well with this. I, I, I'm not as accurate with this as I am with my Glock 19, but to be frankly honest with you, that may be because of all the different upgrades I've done to my Glock. So. Out of the box, I think this is going to be very comparable to the Glock 19. Now, with that being said, I actually have a very similar pistol to this to compare it to, and I'm going to be doing a follow-on video to the Smith & Wesson M&P series. That pistol is going to be this guy right here. It is the M&P Pro Series Core Edition, and what this is is kind of a competition-ready 
pistol from Smith & Wesson. It's already going to have a cut for a red dot and then suppressor height sights and the Pro Series Smith & Wesson trigger as well. So naturally this is going to be an upgraded version. This particular version is still the original M&P9 style. So you're not going to have that very aggressive pistol grip. Uh, you will have the interchangeable back straps, but um, needless to say, this is going to be more of a race gun than your standard run-of-the-mill M&P9 2.0 full-size compact, whatever the case may be. This is going to be more of a race version of that. So I'm going to get this out to a competition or two, you know, do some three gun shoots or something like that and just kind of check things out and see how that runs. And I'll bring you guys an updated video on that here in the future. So there you have it, the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 2.0 Compact. <laughs> that is a mouthful, but overall positive experience. I don't know if I would race out and buy it. I think there's some other pistols out there that may be a little bit better suited for me personally. And to be frankly honest with you, there is another one and it's going to be a video coming out here pretty soon. If you've been watching my live chats or seeing my Instagram feed, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I digress. Let's talk about the M&P 2.0. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comments section down below. I'm always interested in engaging with you guys. So if you own one already, what has been your experience? Sound off. I'd like to hear it. And with that, that's really all I got this time. Thanks so much for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. Here comes a high five. You ready? Here we go. If you made it this far in the video, then I'd really appreciate you guys would consider subscribing. You can do that right here. Or if you want to check out some other videos that I've got going, check them out right here. If you like the hoodies and shirts that I'm wearing, that's Revolutionary Patriot. I got a link to their website down in the description below with a discount code. And as always, keep on dropping those bells and shells. Thanks, y'all.